must explain. I managed to get out. Bit of a heavy pack on today. You know me, blades. And uh, out my closest personal zone. Because what I'm trying to do is do the British Army survival knife. Which is basically sort of introduction and uh, a bit of a review. And I managed to time it quite luckily with borrowing the Saxon blade that was a collaboration between FPS bloke Joe and Fishwolf knives. So I've got a, I've got a custom 01 tool steel blade with my car scales and I'm gonna compare it with obviously the British Army survival knife which is the tough one with I think it's epoxy impregnated scales and up against the cheapest chips web text thing with the lousy DPM pouch sheath. So just mooching through this shaded area. It absolutely tipped down about four hours ago. So it's pretty wet. But I'll see you in a bit. I get on my zone, get set up and uh, get cutting, chopping and splitting. See you in a bit. Sorry. Here's the mentality of the people that use this area most of the time. They're pretty good. But you do get the odd fool. They've actually brought a pallet now. They set fire to it. With their cans. Coke can. Rubbish bag. Drink. And if that white bag is serviceable, I should be able to grab a load of this on the way out. Probably a pair of pants or something burnt. Trophy. Yeah, clean up. Okay, right. Welcome back. What I thought I'd do is while we're carrying all the weight of knives out, and everybody knows that knives weigh my stuff about a pound a shot. So I've got Thurkle 1 and 2, or 1 and 2, whichever is numbered right. That's number 1. That's number 2. So this is for Rob Anders Bork. The convex edge. Sure, you ever see the light rolling up and down. So it's burst head handles. And this is his brother there. I think for his brother. And uh, let's get chopping. I won't use a, a glove on a chopping hand, so any shortcomings on scale comfort will show up. And we'll just get through the noise as fast as we can. I'll do, I don't know, 30, 40 strikes with each one. And I'll try and be as consistent as I can. Zerka 1. Could that see me on camera? So I'm using the um, the rearward hole, so that's what I'm doing. Hold on to the bird's head. Here we go again. Dog! 
very cool dog. You're going to get filthy. Off you go. Oh, we get. Off you go then. Get one. The dog. Special guest star. Okay, so the thing. Yep. Of course, I turn the uh, flippy screen <laughs> around now, man. Right there. Lots of edge that. That's cool. The thing. Yeah, that's my stuff. So I'll start with the web tags. Okay. So this is gently brazed or welded on guard, wood handle, and three of those rivets blasted in. The usual lack of marrying up of scales to stock so it's all a bit rough and ready even a gap in there somewhere but about 30 quid Grinds, but you didn't bite them like my convexes. I've had enough. <laughs> okay, but for me, not enough to hang on to there, so I've really got a grip on hard. trying to survive a knife now and I think this handle is like um, CA impregnated or something because it does smell like glue when you sand it back just keep me in shot yeah there we go Nice, much, much more easy to use. Webtex might be because it's heavier. Don't know. Bites deeper. 
probably better steel. I think we can pick up the J Abrams on it. Stamp mark. There it is. Preferred using that. The only thing of course with this is you got the a left handed sheath. So I remember which we're going to put it all the time. But it felt more secure in the hand than the web texture. Yeah. Fish wolf knives, the Saxon. So the initial drawing was by FPS bloke, Joe. He wanted that high end on there. It's actually sharpened. My Carter scales are two pins. And it's in 01. And I think he um, he does all the power coating himself. So. Oh, here we go. Kydex sheath. You're going to see me there. There we go. Well, he's cutting quite happily at the far end with the more weight, but there's not as much depth as the Army Survival Knife, so I don't think quite as much weight in it. So I'm using that section there. Compare foot to Saxon, there's a hell of a lot more weight and he's thicker. So, as a chopper, he's not quite to be there with it. And there's a bigger hook on the back of there. But they did design this in the back, but nice enough to use. But the scales are far easier on your hand than that. And that leaves a lot of work because you've got to blend all that in and chamfer them all off straight off the, straight out of the box that'll be far easier to use let's do some other tasks, see you in a bit look what he found thing more what the hell, let's go for it so, yeah you still see me Alright, I've got to remember this in reverse order now. Back on. British Army. Fame. This is why my pack is always so heavy. Okay. So, turn that around so I can see what I'm looking at. Berserker number one, Berserker number two. Get the 
thing web text British Army survival knife Fishwolf knives the Saxon in 01 with my Carter scales and that bite was my little thane law in 01 and oak scales brass lanyard hole look at that cool and that log was out of the stream about a week ago okay. if I can I'll try and do some chopping tests I've got my brown in takedown so the blade up real tight bird over there. Makes quite accurate splits. Oh, pretty good. But then when you have a look at the, the way this plate geometry works, it's a slab body, and then just under halfway, it comes out of a sort of scanty grind of a terminal edge, so it should split pretty well. Okay. British Army survival knife which doesn't start as high, so it, if it doesn't bite as deep, it, it should split quite well. Another random log. Split already on the back. There he goes. A bit better. it apart. Just pops it apart. Gone. Gone already. Wicked splinter. So I'm only doing the odd log here and there. But that was better than a web tech. Okay. It's my humble offering. Actually quite a chunky one. Gone. Yeah, yeah, it's gone. I'm not on it or something. Down there. 
Yeah, there's a knot. Sort of slowed it down. And another one there. Feel that. Twisty section. Good long ways. Yeah, well, that knot is pinging it apart. There you go. Absolutely wicking it. Absolutely splitting it. Yeah. It's got a knot running in that one. Go on. And there's my edge. Nice bit of spring steel there. We've got a special guest appearance now. Fish Wolf Knives. Saxon in 01. Pull a last log. And he had a knot at the beginning there. So we'll see how he goes. But he should split quite well. We can hear that pinging. That knot there runs down into here somewhere weird. Oh, kill me camera. He's pretty good. Saxon. By fish wolf knives. Not as thick as the army survival knife, but because he's got under a half a groin, that thick stock, he should split quite well. And the edge that I've stropped up, he hadn't lost any there. So his heat treats are good. Jimmy Foster. I'll link his site at the bottom. For those want a nice bit of a one. Super nice. Okay, welcome back. I've done um, set a tarp up because there's a heavy uh, downfall due in the next sort of half an hour. Mm, so any any minute now the heavens below. Uh, what I've got to do now is just a basic whittling carving activity. Uh, the raw material will be my bed because the stick that those guys threw the other day was so about a third of it's gone. So anyway, let's let's grab a few of these bits and I'll give myself another another bed another time. Oh one, and I'll walk the camera. Each one. So, so we've got big convex edge. Okay. And then get right up close. Put a bug on me a minute. Okay, and it bites deep, so if I really push it, you get those feathers come up. If you go gentle, it still cuts. Yeah. 
I'll see you do cuts the other way to get your notches. Now it's not really a power cut type of blade these big berserker things am I? Because it's too heavy to, to get a stroke like that. But there you go. It does it. Just turn the wood the other way. But it'll chop far better than a bush law or wood law. And you don't cost as much either. Shameless plug. So, you know, it's a variety of holes. Up close, right up close with the thumb, right up against there. Look. Means that you can get right there. You can hear that cutting. Now go back the other way, finish it off. Give yourself a nice cut like that. So that's my berserkers. At least as good. Just, you know, it all chops almost like a hatchet, but it's far more usual than just the head of a tomahawk, because you can still get right up against there like this. It will split pretty well in terms of giving yourself some uh, starting wood. It's just a different beast than the average bushcraft knife. It's a it's a chopper. Pretty heavy, but this will do almost what a hatchet and a and a basic bushcraft knife will do. So it's, it's one tool, an option. But I don't think it's a fun. So again, in my rucksack, in the sheath, I'm going to edit in here to make myself look brilliant. Now, this is the floor for me, for these. That guard up there is a pain in the web. That bit of your thumb. Anytime you want to choke up, there's a mark in there. But anyway. Now, I have sharpened this. It's a very crude grind. You need a lot of backward pressure to get it to cut. This really needs to be backed off to about there. As I used it initially, didn't really get on with it, and moved on. I found my barong far more user friendly because it's just too wedgy for me and that guard in there I've had enough I, I don't want to use that that's just to me it's a fighting blade you know if you use it as a tool this will do a lot of things reasonably well and yes you could use it in a defensive role and then you'll need that guard obviously for naughty moves like this but for whittling I don't want to use it. That is just too restrictive for me. Okay. I have a British Army survival knife. The Parkerization or whatever the coating is is a lot better. The handle materials are smoother, but you still need, as I've said many occasions, you've got to dress all this down because it doesn't marry up very well and you have sharp edges, especially in those rivet areas there. And to use, again, the same thing, but it's slightly higher, so it actually goes above where the web texture gets stuck there. This one just gets above it, so it's almost on the joint of your thumb.
and I think it's better still because I've worked on this far less than that web checks and already he's doing far more I can hear that cutting quite happily and I say I've used this at least as often as the web checks and I've only had it a few months far more effective than the web checks and to be honest probably you know in terms of performance comfort versus price as a correlation this is the one this is the option give the web text on this save up and get that rather than that if that's the style of blade you're after as I found out in my cost on many occasions get the real thing grinders etc annoyance this is a left-handed lever sheet but I don't ever wear them on my belt so you're always in the pack. Okay, the thing. Straight comfort. Hand across the back, hand underneath, sweeps into there lovely. And just devours the wood. You won't get that with that chunky grind of those survival knives. You just won't get it. This is a about a one third, one third convex. A third, one third convex. And it just bites deep. Totally different animal. Some detail work. Cuts at every every point. Just, look, just like that. I put a, what I call distal taper on mine. So it gets narrower, 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 narrower towards the end. So I start thinning down from about here. And just taper it right down. Now not not so good for chopping weight, but he is long anyway. It's a totally different animal. No guard to get in your way. Really nice smooth handle. And I sculpt mine as well, so it's all contoured. Of course the other two are slabbed. So that's my thing. So up close now with the Saxon Codex sheath with an extra thick section there. He's got seat belt material for a belt loop and he's moulded it so that it actually pops apart there on a pinch. Codex sheath. He's finished it up quite well. He's done really big rivets and a drain hole there. So again, it's a slab body, a scandy sort of grind, and I've put a terminal edge and I've stropped it to give more basic, similar amount of time spent on it. So it's actually got a micro convex edge on this. So it's not the standard edge, but it wouldn't take Jimmy much work to put a convex edge on it if you wanted it. He's got a grizzly, so he's got a slack belt section. And that really is quite happy to use, quite pleasing. There's no guard to get in the way. And you've got to put your thumb there. You can't put it on the, it's got a sharpened swedge on the end. Yeah. Not quite as easy to use as my um, thing. But, 
very usable and quite comfy to use. Yeah, far more comfortable to use than the, the two with the guards on. So there's another option for you. That's a pretty thick O1. You get a Kydex sheep with those. Left handed or right handed, so that's again a better option than those army ones which come left handed only. Like the full one. My thing off, and I'm already on number two. Things I gotta make, eh? Well, completely different blade than the other ones, lighter, thinner. And it, 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 any sort of bushcraft blade with this and a decent geometry is going to thrive. It's going to thrive on activities like this. It's just, just absolutely devouring the wood. Gone. And it'll do that forever and a day. Look. Also, you could use this to batten twat it through the wood. But it's not really built for that. But for the weight and the room that this thing takes up, the idea is that it's... Um, it's easier to maintain because it isn't a, a sweep from there up to there. It's straight from there to about there. So if someone's not you know, incredibly proficient with sharpening freehand on stone and strops and all the rest of it, all they've got to do is just find something straight and just literally just concentrate on that section there and you'll be able to work your edge up quite quickly, quite happily with a minimum amount of expertise. Okay, now I've got two more designs coming. I've got the Dane Law and I've got a new one called a Boudica. It's quite chunky. Um, the other one's a, a, the average wood law clone looking geometry. Um, I have um, I've beefed it up in a few areas. Uh, I'll probably skeletonize the handle. I don't generally do that, but I think on that one I will, because I've, I've chunked it up a bit to make it full in the hand, and uh, I'll just keep trying to whittle these eight alongside my customs, which just take forever. And it's getting to the point now where I'm thinking, leaf springs, if I could ever get some money at the game, I'll just oh one the bloody lot, because it's the time grinding the faces off, it just takes forever. So there's my thing law. And that's an O1. Now, tempering wise, I'm guessing I'm about a 57. Okay, I, I prefer an easier edge rather than a harder edge because I like my spring steel resilience. And I say we we can be quite a cold country, um, so I don't go I don't go to the 59s and the 60s. I like the 57 ish. But I can I can actually do it harder if you want it. I just do less less time in the oven on a lower temperature. So anyway, that's all the guys who wanted a um a review of the British Army Survival Hall, which is there. Uh, if you are considering this or the Webtex, get this. It handles better. The guard is uh, it comes across slightly higher. You get a lever sheath. That pouch one is just lousy. I mean, you could you could end up moving the retention strap to there. You just stop. Ready, steady. That happening. How? Okay. So, wouldn't take you more than I don't know a little bit of lever and a rivet, and you could put two there. Click, click. Let's say I I, I use all my knives. Uh, I'll take this out now and again, but I'm not wearing it on my belt. This goes in my pack. 
swallow is out. I thought I'd give a shout out to my mate Jimmy. And there's one of his that I borrowed from Joe. And that's his Saxon. You know, one. I don't know what the hardness is of this. I suppose about 58, 58, 59. It's got black my carter scales. A brass lanyard too, two pins, a bit like steel. I could go into that there, I dare say. But that works. That works to a degree. But no guard in the way for all your tasks. That does plenty. Thanks for joining me again. I hope that's enough info for those interested in the um, survival knife. And uh, I'm going to get myself some wheat in a second. Stop this blades. Join me again. The best you. Food pot. To the picture of the spoils. So, you grasp that with these kids. That's what they were doing. Because they had one rucksack with them. So they had themselves a nice little campfire on the pallet. After food pot, plastic, plastic torch, batteries, one of the nastiest things to leave in the outdoors.